Hey there, Jared Borkowski here from soundguitarlessons.com. That is me. Very happy to be bringing you a lesson today. We're going to be talking about sight reading jazz guitar melodies. Really, sight reading melodies on the guitar at all doesn't have to be jazz, but that's the context I'm going to teach it in. And this is from a question that I just got from one of my students who's in one of my theory courses. And he said he's getting used to the theory and wanting to take the next step towards uh, working on jazz. What's a great way to get into reading jazz lead sheets through the real book or through uh, the fake book or tunes and melodies off of the sheet music. What's a good way to, to get started on that? And it's just a daunting and confusing thing to work on. And this method I'm going to teach you is a little unconventional and it really, really works. And it really is kind of a shortcut that is different than a lot of the method books that will teach you how to read. And it does work for just reading single notes and melodies in any style on the guitar. If you've tried to work on reading music on the guitar, you might have felt that frustration and confusion like that was me. That was me. That was me. I felt that before. Why is it so hard? Why is it notoriously so difficult? Guitarists tend to have this as kind of a pain point. Well, one of the reasons is that you can play the same note in a bunch of different places. So if this note E comes up in the sheet music, that's the same place you can play it in all four of those places. Which one do you play? And of course, one of the answers is, oh, you want to be so good at it that you can play it wherever you're closest to on the neck. But then that's why it's so overwhelming and daunting. How do we get to that point? And, and how do we get to be effective at this and just get to enjoy picking out some melodies off of sheet music? And even just being a little bit uh, decent at this can just be so rewarding. So we can pick up some sheet music and just kind of plunk out the melody and, and start getting it figured out. Um, and or if we want to get quite fluent at it, this method really, really works. So because this is the main problem, at one point, I was just thinking about it. I was like, well, other instruments, like the piano, which is, of course, no easy task to play the piano or sight read on the piano, but at least there's one place where you play at one note when you see that note in sheet music. There's one key you go to that you play. And I thought, well, what if we just do that on the guitar on purpose and start to get comfortable at least in one place to be able to, to play any note that comes up? So that's exactly what I did. I decided that I was just going to map out notes for myself on the fretboard and say, here's where I'm going to play. Here's where I'm going to read music on the guitar. Every time G in this register comes up, I'm going to play it here every time, even though you could play it over here, even though you could play it as an open string here, I'm going to play it here. I'm going to play in this fifth position and I'm just going to get crazy used to any time a note comes up in sheet music, um, that I have one spot and one spot only that I go to for that particular note. And just in case you didn't know, guitar is a transposing instrument. So we're actually playing a down an octave from what's written in typical sheet music. So if a piano or violin played this melody, this is a bright size life by Pat Metheny, amazing tune. If you don't know it or uh, haven't listened to it much, definitely just go listen to that like 20 times in a row. You'll be hooked. But if a piano or violin played this, th this melody or this note right here, it would be an octave up from where we play it. So we transpose down uh, by default. And if you get guitar sheet music, guitar... Uh, like classical guitar music, it'll often show a little eight here at, below the treble clef, which means that it's that we're actually a transposed instrument, transposing it down an octave. So a lot of guitarists will also learn how to read up an octave uh, from what's from what you typically would on the guitar, just so they can play at pitch um, if it's sheet music that's not written for guitar. But this method. You could really design this for yourself any way. You could do it anywhere on the fretboard. You could do it in any octave. You could do it, you know, the, the philosophy under it is like, can we just create some limitations here? Can we just create some parameters that force us to achieve what we want to achieve and get used to what we want to get used to without all the decision making and all the all of the effort wasted on where do we play the note instead of just getting really, really good at playing in at least one place for any note that comes up. And I tell you, this really works. This is what worked for me and I've been teaching it since I first did it for myself. So, um, and I had to catch up with this, like a lot of guitarists, we don't typically learn how to read in our first guitar lesson. We, we It's something we kind of get interested in later, usually. Um, and that was me too. I started reading way, way, way late in the game and had to find a way to catch up and just kind of drilled like crazy on this. So here's that note that I was just talking about here. So that's F. This We have to pay attention to key signature. Um, so this is F sharp. And this F sharp here is going to be this note right there, like we talked about. I'm going to play that for you. Okay. So there it is there. And the way I want you to do this 
We only want to really try to work on one thing at a time. So I want you to just kind of quiz yourself using sheet music. Don't worry about the rhythm at first. So I talk a lot about this in my teaching, which is just worry about one thing at a time. Get used to just, can I jump to where that note is? Can I jump to where that note is? Can I jump? Boom, 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 boom. Once you get really comfortable with that, you can start trying to read rhythms. And or you could even in your first sitting, map it out and review it. So many times you're getting comfortable with where the notes are. If you want to play the tune, then you start working out the rhythm next. But really just go for note, 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 where's the pitch, right? So this is C and that's a sharp, so it's C sharp. And you might need to have a phase where you're just like, can I even identify what the notes are here? That's okay, take your time, whatever you need. Once you get through the initial hurdle, ooh, you'll just be flying and it feels so good. So there's that C sharp there, I'm gonna just jump to it. And that's the same note right here as D flat. Okay, then it goes to B and that's that B right there. And it's just so cool. There's B over here, there's B over here, but I'm always going to play. And with this method, with this training situation, when that B, that middle line on the treble clef staff comes up in any sheet music ever, I'm playing it right there. You see the power here, right? You see how like, oh, I, I could really get used to that. So I'm gonna go up there um, and I'm just playing that note right there so you can just hear it while I'm talking through this. That's E, that's gonna be this E right here. That's B, that's gonna be this B right here. This is how I taught myself to read melodies that are in the middle of the fretboard like this. A lot of reading books will start you off over here in the open position. And this is different than classical reading, by the way. This is like single note reading or rock guitar reading or jazz guitar reading or classical is a whole other beast. You want to really just follow the pedagogical methods and the method books for classical. But a lot of reading books that aren't specifically classical music will start you over here. Doesn't feel right. It, it takes forever to get over here. Like really takes like you got to get to like the third volume. It takes you like five years to get through. So just jump into this and in like two weeks you're going to feel like you can grab any tune and start plunking out the melody um, if you want to go for this. So here's that A right there, here's D right here, you get the idea. So if I started playing through this, I like to, once I'm getting comfortable, start sliding into notes sometimes. There it is. If you've heard this tune or if you know this tune, you'll be like, oh shoot, there it is, Bright Size Life. I'm recognizing that and that's a good feeling when we're, especially when we're pulling up a tune we know. And it's great to do this with tunes you don't know as well. So here's another tune. What's that note right there? Pay attention to the key signature. That's B flat. I'm always gonna play B flat right there. I'm gonna go up a whole step to C. That's C right there. And so on with the rest of the, the melody. And I'm not thinking of rhythm, right? So I'm on that first measure, B flat, G. Uh, then there's A, A, B flat, C, A, F, G, G. Always in the same spot. I'm on this measure right here now. I'm not thinking of rhythm. And then if I want to go back and think of rhythm, so I got up to there from the beginning, actually thinking of the rhythm. You could take your time and work through that. So you get the idea. I have more tunes pulled up here, but I don't need to demonstrate through them necessarily. Charlie Parker's great. I actually did this through the Charlie Parker Omnibook several times to really get used to it, just because the notes are so dense. It's just, you're just gonna have a lot of notes to read in, and he plays chromatically, um, and it's just, and it's awesome. It's it's his improvisations too. It's not just written out uh, melodies. So Charlie Parker Omnibook, if you wanna go super hard on this in a jazz context, but that's it. That's what I recommend doing. Uh, this tune is, is just beautiful, and then this is the last example I have. <laughs> just read the first two lines there so if that appeals to you even if you have a good ear and you can work with recordings pretty well um say you want to work on what a wonderful world and you could spend some time with the recording well if, if you could do this it would just it just speeds things up and it's stimulating in a very different way and it's um, just just a feel-good exercise if this is a direction you want to go. If you want to have this musicianship skill under your belt a little bit, even a tiny bit. And it's all about setting ourselves up for success with parameters and rules and just a strategy. I just always want to have an intentional way that I'm working through things and uh, creating as many limitations as I can to get fluent in a certain within a certain parameter. And then I can branch out from there 
absolutely. And, and I have, and, and I work on that too. So uh, if you are into this kind of thing, jazz and, and working on the lead sheets and the melodies, you're probably also trying to play the chords or want to play the chords. Look at all this business here. Um, can you play through all those chords? If not, you will be able to soon if you get my any jazz chord uh, PDF booklet. It's totally free. It's uh, very similar. It's a method where I have a limited number of shapes and actually it's only eight shapes and you could play any chord that comes up on any jazz tune with just eight shapes. And it's really real. You can just download that for free. There's a link in the top of the description um, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash any jazz chord something I've been teaching for a long time. It's the most popular video on my YouTube channel. It's one of my most popular uh, downloads. So if you want to play chords through jazz tunes, um, as well as working through the reading of the single notes, then grab that for free. And I hope you have a good time working on some of that sight reading, if that's the direction you want to go. I put a new video out every week. So I hope to see you in my lesson next week as well. Please subscribe if you're new here, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you again soon. Happy practicing.